Well, good afternoon and welcome to the International Association of Emergency Managers webinar, Poster Showcase for Tips for Success. Next slide. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. My name is Dale Viola and I'm the lead of the Poster Showcase Working Group. Before we go over the format today, I would like my colleagues to introduce themselves. Good afternoon. My name is Dwayne Hayley-Gantz, and I'm the chair of the conference committee. Hello, everyone. I'm Julie Husk, and I am the conference manager. I am staff at headquarters. Thank you, everyone. So going on to the next slide. So here's what you can expect for today. Everyone should use their chat boxes to send in questions, and Julie will be monitoring those questions. If we see that you have a question that hasn't been covered by an upcoming slide, then we'll address it at the end of the uh, during a Q&A session. So our hope is that this webinar will put folks at ease and answer any questions that may come up about the poster showcase. So next slide. So we're going to start here on the poster showcase page on the IAM conference website. For those who don't uh, want to look at it live, you can go to the link in the screenshot. Uh, the purpose of the Poster Showcase presentation is to convey to a wide audience the significance of an individual's research project, practice, and general findings to practitioners and scholars in the emergency management community, as well as to the general public. So the Poster Showcase is open to students and academics and practitioners. IEM recognizes much of the work that's happening across the industry is at an organizational level. However, the Poster Showcase is unique in that it's an opportunity to share the work of individuals, not organizations. So participants that are chosen to display their posters will receive certificates of participation that document credit towards the IAEM uh, cert uh, certification program under their per uh, professional contribution, category F, speaking. So as a reminder, the poster showcase call for speakers will open next week, Monday, March 21st, and we encourage everybody to submit. Next slide. So in the previous slide, we had a screenshot of the website on the uh, poster showcase page. Very quickly, here is the information from the speakers pages. The pages show the, all the benefits and responsibilities of being a participant in the poster showcase. The poster showcase guidance document is hyperlinked on this page and is a must read for participants. This document has all the requirements uh, for being a participant in the poster showcase. So as we go through the remainder of the presentation, jot down your questions in the chat box. We want to make sure that you uh, we address any questions that you have today or after this webinar. If questions pop up later on, you're thinking on it, reach out to any of us. Our contact information is included at the end of the slides. We're here to help and to make a positive experience for you. So don't be shy. Keep your pens handy and as you review the program and uh, we go through the steps of uh, submitting a proposal, a fabulous idea may pop into your head. Go ahead and write that down before it disappears. So next slide. So the poster showcase guidance document, which can be found on the speaker pages of the conference website as previously mentioned, has everything in it that you need. All the dates you need to know, the requirements for the abstract submission and poster content, on-site logistics, presentation information and details on the evaluation process, and receiving recognition. Between the webinar and the guidance document, we should cover all the usual questions. However, you know we're always gonna be here to, uh, by email to answer questions that you may have later. So look at our information at the, at the end. Next slide. So one thing that's unique about the poster showcase is we have participants competing against a standard rather than each other. So we offer both competitive and non-competitive divisions for the poster showcase. We're excited to see this event continue to grow and expand. And as we attract new people who are willing to share their research findings, project outcomes, and ideas with their colleagues and other conference attendees, the poster showcase has become a cornerstone for new ideas and networking for our membership. Next slide. In the competitive division, our categories are student, which is undergraduate and graduate, academic and practitioner. Participants are competing against a standard, much like the which makes the competition fair and transparent, which leads to much more collaboration and sharing of great concepts and ideas without worrying about having to have a blue ribbon opportunity. Next slide. Julie. If you are a student entering in the competitive division, Additional documentation is required when you submit your abstract. A letter from your academic institution showing enrollment in the 2021-2022 academic calendar year or a schedule of classes will need to be submitted. If you are unable to provide this document, you will unfortunately not be able to, to participate in the competitive division as a student. However, 
you can still participate as a practitioner if applicable or in the non-competitive division. Next slide. So let's suppose that you don't want to go through the competition, but you have an exciting information that you want to share with, uh, about the work that your agency, jurisdiction, office, practice, et cetera, has done. Perhaps it's a working collaboration or a disaster operation. Whatever it is, you can submit it as an abstract for uh, submit an abstract for it by entering the non-competitive division. This is an opportunity to share with your colleagues what you're doing. But again, this platform may not be used as a place for direct promotion of a participant's product, service, or organization. Next slide. And now the how-tos. Uh, participants will be submitting their proposal online directly to IAEM. There are instructions to access the speaker portal in the speaker guidance. As you can see, you do not need to be a member of IAEM, nor do you need to already have an account with IAEM. Detailed instructions and a list of all the required fields, including character limitations, are provided in the, in the guidance that they was referencing on our website earlier. Next slide. So you will need the information listed on this screen to complete your submission to the poster showcase. The heading, title of your proposal, name of presenter, affiliation, the address, phone number, and a primary and alternate email address. Participants may indicate selected division. The competitive division, participants must indicate selected category such as a student, as mentioned earlier, academic, or practitioner. In the non-competitive division, uh, participants just indicate that it is going to be non-competitive, which is a very important area for those that want to show their work but aren't really worried about being graded against the rubric. The abstract and title length. The abstract must be a maximum of 2,000 characters, including spaces. Make sure you remember that. Titles are a maximum of 150 characters, again, including spaces. The selection committee reserves the right to edit abstracts if necessary for clarity, grammar, or proper usage. Often, uh, the selection committee helps you with your poster, so don't worry, as Dale said earlier, make sure you reach out to us if you have questions and let us help you. The presentation theme. The presentation theme must reflect research, experience, practice, or findings connected to emergency management or related fields. We have a lot of allied professionals um, that bring their posters to the uh, conference every year. So if you're an allied professional in the associated field, that also allows you to enter. List of collaborators, advisors, and departments assisting with the research must be listed and identify any funding sources, if you have any. Identify the Institutional Review Board Proof of Regulatory Committee approval, again, if you're required. Is this research? requires the IRB approval if you're a, a faculty member or a student. That must be also provided. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. So this is a screenshot. Oops, sorry, last slide. It went twice, sorry. You need to go back one. There you go, thank you. This is a screenshot directly from the guidance. Since everyone who is acceptable will present a poster to the conference attendees or for the competition, we need the following information done in a uniform manner to make it easier. You might be familiar with other poster presentations in their respective formats, but we are a different organization and conduct our PSC a little bit differently. We're very interested in what you have to share with the emergency management community and what and how you choose to share it is also part of the message. Having said this, if this is your first time and you're not sure if you should submit, please, please, please submit. We are available to help you, as I mentioned earlier, through every step of this process if needed. We have mentors and people on the committee standing by waiting for your phone calls and emails. The left side of the screen is the poster template. Please pay attention to the header. It is important that all posters have this information at the top of their poster the IEM Twitter hashtag, your name, title of the poster, the category you're selecting to participate in. This uniformity makes it easier when people are looking at your poster. It is important that you incorporate all the poster requirements listed in the image on the right as you develop your poster. 
citations are very important to us. Someone in our audience might be thinking about developing posters based on a project done at work. Well, your company probably has guidance documents or standard operating procedures that were referenced. You can cite those. Maybe a new document had to be developed or perhaps the reference comes from a planning meeting. Whatever it is, we want to see sources of, on the poster for the times when a person is not standing in front of the poster. So when people are reviewing your posters as they're in Savannah, they may have questions. So we need to make sure we have uh, the right information on there that they can take that down and use it. We want to make sure that everyone who has research or best practice to share understands this is a great outlet to show your work product. This is an opportunity to network, showcase, and discuss your ideas with other professionals in emergency management, which could lead to either additional research and perhaps even developing a formal session presentation for IEM conferences or developing a networking relationship. It's important to note that research is not a finite occurrence. Research will have questions to answer moving forward. It's important that your poster not only address your findings, but what future research may look like whether for you or possibly somebody else reviewing your poster. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, after you are selected to present your poster at the IEM Annual Conference, you have the opportunity to consult with a coach or a mentor who can provide feedback on poster development, help with on-site uh, presentation skills or answer questions in relationship to the evaluation guidelines. All you need to do is to contact Julie Husk between June 1st and September 30th, and there'll be lots of um, emails to remind you of this. We want to provide you with the best opportunity and most favorable situation to present yourself and your work. We want to emphasize we are here to help, not to sway anyone from participating, which is why we go to these great lengths to be helpful, to offer coaching, mentoring, and if participants want uh, and a tremendous amount of assistance. You will have plenty of time to incorporate the feedback prior to the conference and printing the poster. We send it by email and you can always ask for clarification or more coaching if you need it. All of us on this call and many others from our committee are here standing by to help you. We understand and respect how important your poster is to you and any feedback offered is designed to better your content formatting or presentation in general. This should be your work, not your teams or your mentors or your colleagues or your professors. We look forward to receiving posters developed for the IEM conference reflecting our 2022 theme, IEM 2022 Emergency Management Unmuted. Next slide, please. All right, in this image, you'll see somebody presenting a poster um, during the conference. So our poster dimensions need to be three feet in height and four feet in width. There should be a balance of text and images and white spaces. The poster should be attention grabbing. It should be readable from a distance of four to six feet and should be free of errors. Posters are expected to be developed specifically for IAM conference. There's resources and examples in that guidance we talk about, um, which is on our conference website. I'll be sending you many reminders for upcoming deadlines and next steps, as well as on-site logistical instructions as the event draws near including the exact location and placement of your poster. <clears throat> we try to locate the posters near the registration area of Emacs. In Savannah, it's a great wide area where people congregate right as you go into the Emacs hall. So all posters are in a high traffic area. People are always look at them, invisible to attendees all throughout the conference. Participants in the competitive division must be present virtually for an evaluation session between October 18th and 20th and we'll determine the exact time slots later on. All posters must be set up for display by Monday morning, November 14th at 8 a.m. All participants in the poster showcase in both the competitive and the non-competitive divisions must be available by their posters during the poster presentation session on Tuesday during the program break um, in the morning to answer questions from the attendees. This is a great time where attendees will come up to you and you have opportunity to share your research and network with others. Next slide. So as we talk about the evaluation criteria, let me remind you that the purpose of the poster showcase presentation is to convey the significance of your research project practice and general findings to a broad audience. These are practitioners and scholars in the emergency management community, as well as the interested public. 
So on screen is the rubric that the evaluators use. So no surprises. Everyone gets assessed on the same rubric by a team of evaluators made up of academics and practitioners. Participants in the competitive division must be online during the evaluation session. A selection of, of panel evaluators will assess the poster showcase video presentations of those electing uh, to be in the competitive division virtually in September prior to the virtual evaluation session. Um, the video presentation should be attention grabbing, encourage questions from the evaluators. This is your Shark Tank moment. So for the virtual presentation session, participants in the competitive division should expect questions concerning your research methods used, the significance of the content uh, for practicing emergency managers, controversial aspects of the findings, and future directions for research based on your current findings. The evaluation session should last up to 15 minutes for questions of, from the panel of evaluators. Next slide. Here are the important dates for the poster showcase, and they're all listed in the guidance that we keep on talking about. The first deadline is April 22nd at 11.59.59 p.m. Central Standard Time for a submission of your abstract. I am will notify all of those participants who submit a proposal by June 1st. Between June 1st and June 30th, I'm sorry, September 30th, you may conduct contact us to request a coach, as mentioned earlier. The final PDF image of your poster and the four-minute video presentation is due to us by September 30th. The balance of the dates are for on-site logistics on this screenshot. We're almost at the end of our webinar. If you have not already put any questions to the chat box, please send them now. Next slide. So while Julie's reviewing all the questions in the chat box, I want to let you know that we're here to help. So please feel free to reach out to us anytime that you have questions. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the IAM conference website, as well as sent to all the registered attendees of this webinar. Let's see, we're gonna look for questions. Well, so whenever I did the, uh, the poster showcase myself, um, I was a little nervous. I had never done a competitive academic poster presentation at all, um, but it was a really good opportunity to showcase some of the amazing things that we were doing in my neck of the woods. And I found out that there were a lot of other uh, practitioners in not just my area, but across the world that were thinking similar ideas, but ha didn't have a way to implement it. And so with a little bit of spitballing at the conference, we were able to get uh, some new research areas that we were able to focus on. So this isn't just for uh, the sake of doing it. This has practical outcomes that can benefit your community and your jurisdiction. So definitely keep that in mind as you're uh, making your presentation. Well, it looks like we've answered all the questions throughout the webinar. Um, so if anyone is in the audience needs a more in-depth conversation, please reach out to us. Our contact information is on the next slide. Okay. We're waiting for the next slide. I just want to say uh, thank you to Dale and thank you to Julie and Olivia, who's in the background running this for us. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Uh, we look forward to all your poster submissions and certainly we look forward. All of us will be in Savannah and we hope to see you in Savannah. So if uh, Olivia can throw up the next, there it is. There's our contact information. So Dale, Julie, Olivia, thank you very much from me. Thank you, Duane, and thank you, everyone else, and have a wonderful day.